Welcome. In this session on linear data analysis, we'll explore a normal matrix that is orthogonal. And we'll write this orthogonal matrix as Q. And this will be, this matrix is one that has M rows and N columns. And the columns of this matrix, which we can write as QJ, are orthonormal. And if we have this property, let's suppose that we try to write a matrix as Q times Q transpose. So let's consider, let's consider some matrix A that we are writing as Q transpose times Q. And we can expand that using block partitioning as we can think of this as this will be Q1 transposed, Q2 transposed, and so on until we have transposed all of the vectors. And that will be multiplied by this will be the Q1 vector, the Q2 vector, and so on, until we've represented all of the vectors that are in the matrix. Let's now suppose that we're trying to um, represent entry ij. So entry what is entry ij of this product? Well, that would be the ith row times the jth column. And if we use our conventional um, representation, that would be we, for all of the entries, what we would do is we would take q. Now, the ith row will be represented as qj, qi transpose. So that will be written as ki, and then times column j will be kj, and that is the same as saying, let's take row i transpose and multiply that by column j. And that's the same as saying, let's take column i and dot, take the dot product with column j. And all of those are different ways of saying the same thing. And one of these might strike, strike you as a more natural way to do it. And that's fine, but we can do it in all of these ways. Now, let's observe that AIJ, so what happens in the general case, let's, what happens when I equals J? Well, when I equals J, that's QI dot QI, and that's one. So I equals J, implies that that entry is q i dot q i is one. What happens when we're when we have i not equal to j? Well that would imply that this is q i dot q j and because we said that the columns are orthonormal that has to equal zero. And so the question is, what matrix has the properties of having one on the diagonals and zero in the off diagonals? And that's the identity matrix. So that means that A, which we wrote as Q transpose Q, has to equal the identity. And that implies that Q inverse is Q transpose, because only the inverse matrix for a general matrix has the property 
that the inverse times the matrix is the identity. Let's make some terminology observations. So what does orthogonal mean to us? Well, orthogonal can be um, two vectors. Orthogonal could mean uh, vector subspaces. So when we say two vectors, we could refer to these as u and v. Vector subspaces, we could refer to these as, for example, double-barreled v and double-barreled w. And now orthogonal also means a matrix. And this is written as Q. Let's observe that orthonormal, orthonormal is exclusively a basis set of vectors. So we have to keep this in mind when we're reading other uh, sources. So when we're reading other sources, when we say orthogonal, we, we mean either two vectors or vector spaces or one matrix. And orthonormal is two or more, because one is sort of boring, right? Uh, two or more um, vectors that are a basis. So let's, ex let's take an example. Um, let's suppose that Q is, has two rows and two columns. So we can write Q as, and here we can go back to, for example, um, basic differential calculus where we did trigonometric substitution and we can verify that if we want two columns that have unit length and that are mutually orthogonal we can write that as we can say that the first column is the cosine of theta and the sine of theta and then to ensure orthogonality and unit um, norm we'll make that minus the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. Now, what are the eigenvalues of a 2 by 2 orthogonal matrix? Well, when I work this out, so I would take the determinant of q minus lambda times i, and then I would get a quadratic in lambda, and I would solve for it, and that would give eigenvalues which are lambda equals, and this would be the cosine of that angle plus or minus the sine of the angle times the imaginary number i. So this means that in general the eigenvalues of a 2 by 2 orthogonal matrix are complex numbers. And we can observe that these are real, are real if and only if. So what's the condition there? Well, that would mean that the sine of the angle has to be 0. And that happens for 0 and pi and 2 pi and 3 pi, oh, and minus pi 2. So that's if and only if that angle that's encoded inside this vector is k times pi for an integer k. So in general, it's easy to work with an orthogonal matrix because its inverse is its transpose. A caution is that the eigenvalues are in general complex numbers and that means that the eigenvectors are also complex numbers.